And now I would like to invite Eric and Lisa. So just let's welcome them right now. They're really the heart for it, and it's just a wonderful couple to be, and it's you know to be able to work with them. It's it's such a delight. So guys, like when you first start having this vision on K, could you imagine that it's gonna be like the extent of this project? It's gonna be this big. Uh. We have to admit it, it's uh, beyond our imagination. And the first time we went there, which is 2007, and uh, it's all beyond our imagination that God's bring us this far, and especially the heart for everyone in Canada. We haven't talked or think about it back, days, back in days, but right now, see all the people can bless this particular island, which is we call it Forgotten Island, and no one thinks about it, but here we are. Actually, what, what, what brought you to K? <laughs> like, why, why K? You know? Yeah, well, it started, uh, Eric mentioned, 2007. Actually, two of our friends, they both doctors, went to that island for duty, and then they saw um, hundreds of Malnourished children there. And they just contacted us and then say, what can we do about it? And then we went to that island and we see huge needs. And when we first see um, and saw and touch that children, we, we kind of saw that and we felt that God spoken through the children. We actually see him through them. So um, we pray because we don't have we, we didn't have any experience about treating malnourished children before and then we pray to God what can we do about it and um, yeah those are the children of K Island that's what happened to them and then we pray to God what can we do about it and please um, meet us with the right link the right people so we can help them and then uh, God brought us to um, UNICEF Center in Atambua, it's, it's another island near Timor-Leste, and then we start learning how to uh, treat malnourished children. So it started from there, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and what, what's actually happened in Kate, and why do you think that, you know, this island still need our support till now? Yeah, well, um, we, when God uh, delivered us uh, the first babies, we were so happy that we were able to cure them. Actually, um, we did fundraising and then bring the children to our center. Uh, we finally have um, this uh, little place that people uh, gave us. Actually, the local church gave us this room, and then we started to uh, do therapeutic uh, center for them. But then God brought us to another level. We were happy that the first children were cured, but then um, we feed them on our center and then they went back to their family and went back to their community. And then we started to see that they become hunger again, they become malnourished again, so they, they become sick again. So this is like the tipping um, point actually that got really opened our eyes that um, it's not enough just to feed them, we have to do deeper level working with the community with the families so food alone is not enough like we, we, if we just go there and then bring food yes unfortunately yes um well feeding hungry children is good it's a start but we cannot just stop there that's why um it's um it's so blessed that god like lead us step by step through all this journey and then um he opened our eyes more about what's the deeper um, root problems of hunger and malnutrition in K Island, for example. Um, God, God uh, opened many facts, actually, uh, through all this journey, that uh, behind malnourishment and hunger, there's uh, many social layers of social problems there. For example, um, the local people, they left farming. They um, left farming and they left uh, local food. They started to eat rice. We heard about what's happened with rice before from Organic for All of it. They started to eat rice and then they started to consume instant noodles. They don't have any education, enough education about what is nutrition about, so they thought it's enough. So, um, and then 
um, the younger generation, they went to um, Papua. They left farming and they went to Papua to do mining. And then um, they don't have enough education about sexual transmitted disease. And then they cut the disease and then spread it out to uh, the island. So there's layers of social problems. And if you see in this uh, um, Eagle Bulletin, uh, at page 13, there's actually um, um, many social data here that, that uh, mention about what happened in K Island. Or we, we see it there in the screen. So for example, we see um, there's uh, 2,244 uh, a mortality rate of uh, mother. So if we compare to Canada, Canada is only 12. Even Malaysia, our neighbor, is only 29. Indonesia has, oh, and that particular island has 244. And also it's the second highest uh, AIDS uh, and HIV is spreading out from that island. So there's, um, if we see there's so many layers of problems, then we see uh, malnourishment and hunger is only the tipping point. Yeah. So the, like, well, at, like the rest of Indonesia seems to be, you know, fine, or, yeah, fine too, right? Like, why does this, like, all of these help uh, hard to go to this island? Is it because of the geographic uh, setting of the island? Like, yes, can, can you show us where it's located and tell us about? Okay, uh, let's talk about where's Indonesia. Indonesia is on the s southeast of Asia. So, Indonesia is a huge and wide country. So, spread from the eastern part or the east coast of Indonesia on the left side to the to the right side, which is Marauke and Jayapura, or Papua, it's like from east coast to west west coast of North America. So that's how huge Indonesia is. So where is K Island is? K Island, we have to flew from Jakarta, which is the central uh, business and government in Jakarta, to Ambon. That's uh, four hours plane by plane. And then we have to travel another two hours to Tual. And where our project is going to be, we have to take another two hours boat ride. So it's uh, challenging. And especially on that island, the infrastructure is it's not built properly or is not even connected. So the all coastal villages is not connected for the whole island. So to travel, there's the option is only either you go by boat, uh, which is a harsh condition, and the second is motorcycle uh, or off-road motorcycle, and the third option is by foot. So uh, that's the challenges. And in the Cape Besar alone, uh, people live there. It's a lot. Uh, they have forty-eight thousand people more than 50 villages around the islands, which is one to the other villages, it's hard to connect. So that's the challenging uh, 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 parts. And especially on the medical parts, uh, it only have three, uh, what, you, what we call in Indonesia is Puskesmas, it's like a little clinics, and really hard to find doctors there. So that's what happened. And the education in the civil ages is really limited. Uh, for example, we went to Papua. So uh, there is a, what we call a mid-school, uh, SMP. Middle school. Jun junior high junior school high, or yeah. junior high or mid-school. So the teacher of mid-school, it's only elementary school graduate. So uh, this problem is, the we, it's, it's hard to pass the right education. It's hard to pass the right knowledge. As in God's word, without knowledge, people will perish. So uh, that's what, uh, and I have a video about Callan, so. Uh,
Wow. I can see the challenge, but I can also see that the place is so beautiful, right? Like the beaches. Like the first time I actually tried to Google K Bazaar and I go to images, they show all the beaches and it goes like, oh, I want to be there. <laughs> right? And who's up to that motorcycle challenge too? So what, what's your plan for the next year or so? Like, what, what, what do you plan to do there next? Uh, first, of all, first of all, we, can, we have to, uh, we started this uh, idea about sustainability. We started this idea about how to build a community, community of peoples of God, and who can uh, pass the God's love into themselves because we believe the one we started it will ripples it will continue because if we just cure the curing the people doesn't mean it they didn't get sick anymore but if they lifestyle change their mindset change they how people live change it will sustain and uh, the community will change. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, I got this one interesting um, facts actually that I'm gonna show you. Probably the next slide. Yeah, this is Maria and her baby. We met her last October actually when we went there. So Maria had her baby unplanned. She's 16. She's 16, he had, uh, she had uh, her baby unplanned, and then she was so ashamed and scared that she locked herself inside her room and not wanting to meet people. And what happened was because she was so ashamed and scared that she didn't really took care of the pregnancy and she didn't, uh, she didn't go to the health center. So when we met her, it was already high risk. Her pregnancy is overdue, the water is already uh, turned green, and then it was like a high-risk uh, high uh, um, pregnancy, and then we have to uh, go to a surgery actually to cure her. Well, luckily we, we came with a volunteer doctor, so then, and we have uh, like this uh, floating hospital with us, so uh, Ma Maria actually can be helped. But she was so scared that I, I asked her to pray. Uh, when I said, uh, well, if you're so scared, let's pray together. And she said something like this that really opened up my mind. And it was, she said, I think God don't want to hear my prayers anymore. She said something like that. She was so scared. And I can understand that. So when God really bring Maria to us, it's opened up our new perspective that actually what happened in the health problem they have like layers of social and spiritual problems too well for maria for example what what is happening in k, k Bizarre island first the teenage boy and girl they don't have proper education about sexual transmitted diseases and with maria case she got this uh, disease actually she got sexual transmitted disease at the age of 14. so that's what happened and why K Island is a is HIV and AIDS uh, disease is spreading from that island is because the young generation they left farming and they went to Papua for mining, and then because they don't have any uh, proper education about sexual um, safe sex, and then uh, the disease got spread out to, uh, from the Papua to K Island, and then got spread out to the uh, younger comu uh, community there, and then they have they don't have access to healthcare facility, they don't have access to education. So that many layers of problems here that mm. got opened up our eyes that we need to work not only with the physical part, but also the uh, soul part and the spiritual parts also. Mm. So the, the first step that we're gonna do, like what are we going to build there? Um, so uh, next slide, please. Well, if we see here, um, well, ICC Mission and Outreach Partner, we talk about it and we then agree that we need to, uh, as we mentioned from, from the cases that we, we've, we've been um, experienced, that we need to have this holistic aspect. We need to have a physical aspect and soul aspect and spiritual aspect too. For example, the physical aspect. We still will need to work with the community to combat malnourishment and nutrition. 
uh, the feeding center will be still there or we still we will work with volunteers doctor but it's not enough only at that stage we need to work with the community we need to bring uh, local food back so they have food uh, security so they have uh, enough education about uh, nutrition why we have to feed uh, nutrition to our children to the under five and babies for example it's not uh, only the knowledge that people's gonna be um, eating rice or instant noodle and it's enough but we need to um, revive back the local food and then we need to work with the frontliners frontliners means this uh, uh, midwife because they're the a catalyst there for healthcare. We need to work with them, support them, and then we need to work with the youth too. So we were thinking that we will have this generation of social change agent. That after they've been trained and they've been blessed, the spiritual aspect here is important too, that they can um, get support. We will work with local uh, church, we will work, uh, uh, do the a small group sharing and praying and then after that after they've been blessed they will be blessing to the community so uh, the whole program will will be like holistic mm. yeah. and after all this physical you know help that you're giving them how can we connect that into their spiritual development like how can we uh, basically lead them to know more and to connect more to Jesus, kind of thing. Um, probably the next video will show you. So probably a little background with this video. Um, this is video about Veronica and June. Uh, they both live in Pe Papua and we went there to Papua and then um, uh, we got open up our mind again about what happened there in Papua and then how people can actually be touched by an action of love. Um, okay. okay. Can we have the video? So basically, um, the video will be about Veronica and June. Oh, okay. We'll... Oh, it's not there. Well, maybe you can just give us the summary of, oh. like, yeah, if. Are we still trying? So yeah, basically, um, if we can uh, watch the video, uh, we met this uh, mama from uh, a village, uh, one village in Papua. Uh, her name is Veronica, and she was so sick that uh, she couldn't walk and she couldn't um, actually move her body parts. Right? Like she was so, yeah, dehydration, like a third a level of uh, dehydration. And then we brought this uh, nurse and doctors, right? And but we don't have, we didn't have any um, equipment to heal Veronica actually, because he, she was already in this level of third uh, level uh, dehydration, um, and the fourth level people gonna be died. Like it's it's the limit already there. So what we did was that June. Um, one of the nurse there, he was not a believer, but um, he responded. He responded, and then he saw the needs. And then uh, that night, he was awake like all night, right? Like Veronica needs fluids in her body, and we don't have, we didn't have any um, proper uh, tools to do the um, um, what do you call it to yeah the syringe or the info, uh, infusion tools. So uh, we couldn't like really uh, flow the fluid to her body.
but then he stayed uh, all night and then injects it like uh, five millimeters by five millimeters, uh, like each, I don't know, each five minutes to just, uh, okay, don't we have the video there? Uh, but no sound, I think. So yeah, this is Veronica in June. She said that she stayed, uh, she, she couldn't move, and then, yeah, she was, she couldn't move her, yeah. And then people need to be, to help her. She said parents, and yeah, help her. She couldn't even eat. And then she said she, she was happy that she got help from God because uh, Dr. June here came, but June was not a believer. Yeah, so she gave give thanks to the Lord and to Dr. June here. So Dr. June is going to explain what, what actually happened. The treatment. He said that he got news from other village that one of the mama got very sick and then um, they found her. And she couldn't do anything. She was weak and her pulse was hard to find and suffered greatly of dehydration. And there's no um, peristaltic movement and he's weak, like she's really weak. And he said that there's no grade five, there's only grade four. Grade four is dead already. And they rushed to help her. And he said that this is our mama and we need to help one of God's people here, he said. And see, he said that they don't have any equipment to help. All he she needed is fluids in her body and they don't have the equipment. She suffered for heavy dehydration. And yeah, so he basically injected five millimeters by five millimeters to her pulse to her bloodstream and then, yeah, every five. And then she responded to it. She started to be concise. And she got better and conscious and he said that this is a miracle of God. This is amazing. He said something like that. She can stand, stand there is a miracle for. It's a proof that God is here. He said something like that. And, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Jun was not a believer. No, he was not a believer. So yeah. can you see that when love, when God, God is love, mm -hmm. right? But love in, is an action and people responded to it. Mm -hmm. Probably Eric can share because he was there and he took the video actually. Yeah, uh, from the, the, what we experienced about how we interact with people, how we respond to our God's love and the reaction and the impact to the community and especially for her and it's not just helping the needs, it's actually helping us too who's helping them. So uh, everyone can see, everyone can feel it that uh, at that moment uh, it's not our, uh, our work, it's uh, God's work because she was suffer with uh, level 3 dehydration that means uh, if we late for just a day she's, she's gonna be dead and uh, turns out we can help her in just and the next day she started to help us to cook and help us to provide foods with her limitation. So wow. that's how we respond uh, to God's love and they respond mm -hmm. about God's love that have been received and he starts sharing. That's mm -hmm. what we 
And yesterday you told me the story about Maria as well, that the Maria that you just saw in the video, the previous uh, photo, that how she was taken care of. And when she went back to the community, she became an icon of the community. And, and that sort of like gives inspiration to the community that God is really there, that God really is still at work at the moment. And that's how, you know, answering the physical needs really translate into people believing, you know, that God loves us. And it doesn't matter what we are, it doesn't matter, you know, Maria probably messed up in her life, but she's not too far from the love of God, right? So, just want to open up an opportunity probably in the next five minutes to, for you if you have any questions for Eric and Lisa. So, yeah, if you have any questions, you could probably just raise your hand and I'll give you the mic and you can answer, you can ask your questions. Anyone? Yeah, Papar. Are there Christian churches on that island? Uh, actually, yes. Actually, um, well, the truth is actually um, Eastern Indonesia is Christian-based community. But the fact is they're the poorest and then they won't be, they're not be able to empower themselves and they're not be able to become a blessing to the community. That's, I think, one of our wake up point too, that we need to do something, not only on the physical part, but also on the soul part and the spiritual part too. Yes. And to add to, like, we will be working with the local churches yes. as mm -hmm. well in terms of establishing like home groups and smaller communities. And uh, yeah, some, you know, it's, it's a Christian base, but the Eastern Indonesia, sometimes the churches there don't really get support, enough support, even from Jakarta or from other area. So we hope to really go in there. And that's probably part of ICCC, where we come in and providing leadership trainings, home group materials, teachings, or like equipping them so that they can really build a strong community within themselves. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Well, you know what? Feel free after this for the fellowship. Feel free to come to Eric and Lisa to you know, ask if you have any question. And we have... Um, displays from different organizations that's going to be working with us. Uh, feel free to ask Peter about Organics for Orphans, or Lucy and John and Winston and Carrie and Craig about Mustard Seed and you know, any questions that you have about this endeavor. But I, I'm really excited about this because what God is going to do in K, I believe, is not just for the people of K but it's really for all of us. And this mission endeavor provides actually platform for us to be able to exercise whatever that God has placed in our lives. This summer, one of our youth, you know, there, he's, he's going for an exchange pro program in Australia, and she has decided that on the way back here, she's gonna stay for a bit in Cape. And, and it's really like touched my heart that the young people is just, we haven't even started then, just like, I'm going to go, <laughs> right? And that, that's really like, when, when I hear it, it really breaks my heart. And, and I believe it's not really just that one. The, the opportunity is endless, right? We, we, we talked about educations, we talked about health, we talked about agriculture, and who knows what God's going to open up. There's going to be a lot more, right? And it, it's really going to take... All of us. It's not really something that, you know, ICC, even ICC and Master Team and Orphan, you know, Organized for Orphan can actually do alone. It needs the body of Christ to really come together. And, and let this be a, a you know, a, a project that can ripple out. That, you know, people will see the community that, that they're built there and, and, and they say like, if God is there, we want God in our places too. Right? So let this be a, a prototype, and, and I, I believe all of us is going to be partners in that, in, in any forms. Right? We need you know, uh, people to partner with us in prayer. We, we need people to give their time, like, like the youth that, uh, that I told you, to just, just give their time to just spend, I don't know how long she's going to be there. 
right? And in the next summer, we're probably gonna start gathering up the youth, and, and they, they have like beautiful talents of music, teaching, kids, children ministry and everything. It's an endless opportunity. You name it, we, we, we can do it over there. Right. And um, not only that, we also need some financial partners because a project like this costs quite a bit. We estimate about $50,000 a year just to start whatever that we plan for now. And as the mission, uh, as God is, is developing it, I believe it's gonna be much more than what we need. So, but we just believe this. Whatever vision that God's given us, He will give us provision. Provision will come after the vision. And, and the provision will also come from the body of Christ. So if, if, you know, pray about it, and if God really plays in your heart that you want to be a, our financial partners, there's a form that's um, inside of Eagle magazine, right? Maybe some can, I, I can probably have that little form. Yeah. It's something that you can fill up, right? Can I have one? Oh, there, okay. Yeah, you can fill up your information there with your name and address, and please add your phone number in there as well. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can contribute financially. You can do a one-time financial giving. Uh, just put it there, the amount that God puts in your heart. Or you can do it a more uh, a constant support through monthly pledge or yearly pledge. Whatever that, you're, that God has really um, moved you. Right? And if you write a check, please write it to Indonesian Christian Church Canada. And put a note for K Island. Because that's where we're going to, you know, set aside uh, for that. And for updates, you know, uh, there are two ways you can either receive updates by mail or by email. Right? And I know some of us are probably still technologically uh, struggling with the new system. But, but again, you know, we don't want to hinder anyone to get updates and information. And, and, and Lisa will continue to update us. We will uh, do a website and then we'll let you know, you know once that uh, is established to, to keep us updated. Right? And again, just believing that all of us can really make a difference. Right? So, you know, if you... Um, I think the ushers will, will be standing by there. So if you write it, if you want to give, you just, just go to the ushers and says, you know what, uh, I, I feel that God really want me to contribute this, and just, just give it to them, and they will change. Oh, there's a box. There's a box on, as we, on that table over there. Yeah, then you can just put your um, contributions there. So, let's work together in this. And I believe in, you know, pretty soon, it's it's amazing how when we start, we didn't think that it's going to be, you know, we're going to network with different people when, when we first think about this. And suddenly just got, God put all the puzzles together. And I just, I'm looking, really looking forward to see what God's going to do next through all of us in this room, right? And, uh, oh, we we'd also do have some Indonesian um, items for sale. Outside and food as well, Indonesian snacks and food for sale, uh, and the proceeds will actually go to K Island. So after we're done, feel free to look into it, and you know, if you like it, you can purchase it, and all the money will go to the to K Island as well.